So let's talk about Tesco, Tim. Uh, share price fallen through the floor. Uh, new chief executive coming, Philip Clark has resigned. New Unilever man uh, coming very soon. They wouldn't even let him eat his cake, would they? So, in a nutshell, where have they gone wrong? Where have Tesco gone wrong? Tesco have gone wrong by ignoring the consumer. They went right at the beginning when they understood from the work from Dunhamby and the club card, their analysis of customer behaviour and recommending appropriate products was fantastic work. But even then, at the outset, all they ever did was focus that those offers were coupons, money off coupons, never here's you're a dinner party type person, so here's some menus around dinner parties. So, so are meetings. you saying it's too much of a sort of a sales promotion approach is what, they, no, is what they're much, guilty of? Too, too much of a, a profit price driven approach. Mm. Um, I, in fact... Almost losing your heart. I don't think they've ever had a heart. Mm. Well, what would you say about the store experience? I mean, from my, from my point of view, in the most part, it's pretty bland, pretty generic. Um, some stores have got a lot more fun going on in the store. Well, they're not. They don't, they're, the regime um, is to have very big stores filled with lots of product variants, which Aldi and Lidl have shown the um, futility of that. And indeed, the Unilevers of this world have expanded their product ranges within brands to fill those giant stores. They're not necessary to fill the shop, shopping needs of most consumers. So you would, really, I would look at analysing the way people shop, what they need to have shopping and so forth, and then rebuild on that basis, on a trial basis. So if we were to say, right, we've got the job of CEO here and we're going we're gonna to come up with a quick turnaround plan, what, what would you have in that turnaround plan, Tim? Well, fundamentally, it's a cultural issue. And the fundamental culture is to say, how do I turn this business around? I want people to want to shop with us. Yeah. I want people to want to deal with us. I want suppliers to bring us their best products and their best prices. I want to have a relationship with people that is sustainable mm. and is not a continual confrontation. Mm. Instead of being a 30% brand, perhaps they should have a 20% brand and a 10% brand. Well, they've done that in the, the, the four or five ranges of own label, mm. so they think. But what character or characterisation have these individual brands got? They're product groupings, they're not brand groupings. Yes, they're sort of they're quality levels, aren't they? Quality super levels quality, and price level. Less quality level and very low quality level. Exactly. Exactly. If you were that ubiquitous in the market, what would you be doing? You'd say, right, I'm going to segment the market, I'm going to create an upmarket brand, I'm going to create a low-market brand. Oh, well, we'll call that, and they've did, even those have been designed by function. Mm. You know, this is Tesco Local or Sainsbury's Local. I'd also look at segmenting the marketplace to say, wh where is the flagship shopping brand and where is my... Low, you know, high value, low cost brand. Why have I allowed Iceland and other people to take that space? Fundamentally pleased that a marketing person has been chosen to do the job, and I wish them absolutely well because it's such an important part of the nation and the, the business as a whole. In fact, you could be arguing that we could have independence for Tesco, and that could replace Scotland because <laughs> that's. <laughs>